Hi everybody, once again, this is Mr. Defy. Welcome back to uh, part two in the series of rewriting into slope intercept form. Um, we left off in my last video with this example here, and I wanna continue from that with this example here. So let's go ahead and jump right in. When you have to rewrite something that is in point slope form, as it is in this case, into slope intercept form, what you have to keep in mind is what slope intercept form actually is. So although it was in the last video and I have been saying this multiple times, it never hurts to refresh your memory and to review it again. So slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, now you can see when you compare the way that function looks with the way this function looks here, this is point slope form. They look very different, though in truth, they belong in the same family because both are linear functions, which means that if you were to graph a line from a completed function uh, or make a graph, you would get a line. And so what I want to show you is how to change from this form into this form. So let's get right into it. What you want to do is notice a couple of things going on. Number one, on the right side, there is, there is distribution happening here. We have this, the distributive property on that side. And because of that, we will have to employ what we know about the distributive property. Sorry, I keep popping that up. Um, we have to use what we know about distributing to get that x plus 6 out of there. Because in the end, there are no parentheses in slope intercept form. See? The x is completely free, and so is the y. But if you look at point slope form, that's not exactly the case. So here, our y is free, but our x is locked inside this parentheses with the plus six. We have to get it out of there. And so right away, my first task is to take that five and distribute that inside. What I get is y minus two is equal to five x minus 30. There, my x is now free. And believe it or not, we are almost done with this because the last thing I have to do is get this minus two out of the picture. And I need to remember my inverse uh, operations and my properties of equality. So if this is a minus two and it needs to move away from the y so that it can be isolated, I then have to add two. And I have to be mindful about where I put that on the other side of this dividing line. I need to put it under its corresponding like term, which would be the, the negative 30 there. It wouldn't belong under the 5x because the 2 does not have an x. And so I would not be able to combine the 5x with the 2. So on the left side, negative 2 and positive 2 create a 0. Therefore, they disappear. I get y by itself, which is looking good. The 5x simply drops down. There's nothing at all I need to do with that. And my negative 30 plus 2 then becomes a negative 28. And with that, my function is completed. You can see clearly that when I, when I compare this with slope-intercept form, everything lines up beautifully. So this is my y. That's my slope. This is my y-intercept. And we're done. We're done with that example. It's really just as fast as that. Now, there are cases when you have a slope that is a fraction. What you do could be one of two things, but we won't look at that example just yet. Let's go ahead and move on. I promised you that there would be a word question here that we would handle. And this word question, I really like because what it does is it, it allows us to make a sort of connection between uh, scenario and what would otherwise, otherwise be just a cut and dry um, function. So let's go ahead and read through this. Uh, the town of San Simeon charges its residents for trash pickup and water usage on the same bill. Each month the city charges a flat fee for trash pickup and a fee of 25 cents per gallon for water used. In January, one resident used 44 gallons of water and received a bill for $16. Now, it may seem like there's a lot of information here, but the truth is, out of all this scenario, we only need a small percentage of um, what's given to us, and the rest just creates a story. And once you read it, 
You don't need it. So what I'm talking about, the parts that we do need, I'll highlight for you. It's right over here. 25 cents per gallon. Now that's, I put per gallon as part of my highlight mark because that per gallon indicates that we have a rate of change. And then the other pieces of information that we need is that we have 44 gallons of water and when this resident used that much water, what he or she received was a bill for $16. To me, that sounds a lot like input and then output. So if I think carefully, we have a rate of change. This is our rate of change. And our rate of change is given by 25 cents per gallon. So it's 25 cents per one gallon used of water. And that's our rate of change. Okay, so our, if you look here, our change in Y is our 25 cents, our change in X is our one gallon of water. Okay, so this is definitely something that we will be able to use because this is also known as our M, M, rate of change, however you want to call it, they all mean the same thing. And so now I look at the 44 gallons and the bill for $16. Well, to me, this seems like an input and output pair. Now remember, for, for a function to be a function, you have, you have to have one input paired up with exactly one unique output. So in this case, if, if the resident uses 44 gallons of water, he will be charged $16. He won't be charged $16 if he uses 43 gallons or 45 gallons, but he will be charged that much if he uses exactly 44. So what this means is in terms of an order pair, we have 44 gallons as an input creates an output of $16 on the bill. Okay. And so what I do with this now is I think, well, what do I do with this information? I have a slope. Okay. And I have an order pair. Oh, but wait, every order pair creates a point. And so what this means is that I actually have what is representing a point. represents a point. And so now if I look at what I have, what I have is a point and I have the slope. Point and slope. That means this is a job for the point slope form. And point slope form looks like this. It's y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Okay, and once again, just to quickly recap, sorry about that, to quickly recap, um, you need to have one output number there, one input number here. You also need to have your slope, which will take that place right there. And I have everything I need. So I'll go ahead and drop in all the things that I know I have. And what I get is y minus my output number is $16. My slope is 0 0.25, so, or 25 cents per gallon. My input is 44 gallons. And there you go, that's point slope form. If you're wondering, well, what does this have to do with slope intercept form? Well, it has everything to do with it because point slope form and slope intercept form belong in the same family. And so what I can now do is I can transform this point slope form into slope intercept form. And I can get um, an actual form that I can graph with. You can graph with, with point slope form um, if you know how to do it. Some people like slope intercept form, and so I'm going to show you how to change from this into that. So this is the way it goes. I'm going to isolate this over here. If I want to change from here to slope intercept form, I have to first of all remember that slope intercept form is 
y equals mx plus b. I say this so much, but the reason is because I really think the more you see it, the more it stays in your head and the more it makes sense. So I'm going to start by taking this 25 cents and distributing it, distributing that inside. Okay, now, yes, you have a decimal there. Don't worry about that. Just take care of it. Be careful with your math. What we have now is y minus 16 is equal to, this is 0.25x, and this would be minus 11, if you do all the math, okay? 25 cents is a quarter, or one-fourth of a dollar. So if you take one-fourth of 44, you get 11. That's where my math is coming from. Now, once again, like in my last example, you're almost done. The only thing left to do with this is to take this negative 16 and do the inverse of that. I put it here. Those two eliminate each other. And what I get is y is equal to 0 0.25x plus 5. And that is my slope intercept form. Okay, again, they may, <clears throat> excuse me, they mean the same thing. One means the same as the other. So these two, they mean the same thing. And that's important to note here because sometimes when we see that two things look different, we tend to think that they aren't, um, they aren't the same at all, but they actually mean the same. They mean the same thing. Okay, I hope this video helped you. Uh, we looked at two examples today um, after my first video. Just quickly recapping and going back. Our first, vid our first uh, example was rewriting point slope form into slope intercept form. And we did that by distribution and some basic rules about solving an equation. Our second example involved uh, reading through a scenario and then picking from that the parts that we needed to, um, to create a linear function and it turned out that what we had were elements of point slope form so we created that here and then changed it into slope intercept form if you wanted to graph this you would uh, you would have your y-intercept you would have your rate of change or your slope to get your second point and you'd have a line representing your function and the scenario that we just read over there. So um, please stop by, leave a comment. Um, if you want to watch these videos, they're all available on YouTube. Uh, look under MKD753. And please stop by and check off them. These videos uh, are made for you, and uh, I hope they are helping. But let me know if there's anything that you would, would like to see or change in any of my videos. All comments are welcome. So please take care, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.